and seven as he pins John Hartapee of Central Michigan in the NCAA Wrestling Championships. In the Gymnastics Championship from Nebraska, the Cornhuskers, the team to beat in 1981, led by the brilliant Jim Hartung. Hartung and Oklahoma's Bart Connor, just one of the many brilliant performers you'll be seeing. Ron Gallimore of Iowa State, one of the best in the world in the vault. James Yuhashi, University of Oregon in the floor exercise. Kurt Thomas will be our expert commentator. ABC Sports presents the NCAA Championship Special. Featuring the track and field championships from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The wrestling championships from Princeton, New Jersey. And the gymnastics championships from Lincoln, Nebraska. And this ABC Sports Special is brought to you by Merrill Lynch, whose ability to guide you through the intricacies of investing makes them a breed apart. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Now, 1982 Chevy Cavalier, a car with the latest speed earlier in the week in Lincoln, Nebraska at the NCAA Gymnastic Championships. Jim Hartung of the University of Nebraska, his final event, going for the all-around title. He needed a 9.7 to tie the leader, Bart Connor. A 9.75 would give him his second consecutive NCAA all-around title. Kurt Thomas is with me. And Steve, I can imagine what was going through his head right here. He knew what he needed to score. He had that home crowd advantage. This is a great routine for him. And he had that rivalry with Bart. The crowd applauded every move that Hartung made. He felt very confident. And as he got to the end of his routine, he knew that all he needed to do was to hit a dismount, and he would have the score he needed to defeat his arch rival, Bart Connor of Oklahoma. Bart Connor got exactly the score he needed, a 9.75, and defeated Connor, who did not compete in last year's championship, for the first time in four tries. Well, that routine and that dismount clinched him his second NCAA title. Hello, I'm Steve Zabriskie, and welcome to the Bob Devaney Sports Center here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Once again, the site of the NCAA Gymnastics Championships. As we've just seen, the all-around competition was extremely close. That was not the case, however, in the team championship, as the University of Nebraska became the first team in the last 20 years to win three consecutive NCAA titles. The last time that happened was 1959, 60, and 61, Penn State University doing it. Obviously, Nebraska was helped considerably by being here on their home floor and having a huge partisan crowd on hand. What effect that'll have on the individual championships, which we'll be bringing you now today, remains to be seen. Working as our expert commentator, the former two-time NCAA all-around champion, world champion, and premier name in men's gymnastics, Kurt Thomas. And Kurt, the rivalry between Bart Connor of Oklahoma and Jim Hartung of Nebraska is very much alive. You know, Bart was uh, redshirted last year. He wanted to come in this competition as a senior and win it. And he couldn't do it. Jim Hartung took that away from him. And Jim went through six great routines, and we'll see what happens. There's been a change in the scoring this year, which could make a great de deal of difference in the individual championships. There is. This year, we've made scores do not carry into the finals. Everyone starts with a clean slate, and so it should be very interesting. OK, we're just about ready for the first individual competition. That will be in floor exercise. And Bart Connor will be the first competitor, the senior from the University of Oklahoma, who won the floor exercise championship in 1979 NCAA Gymnastic Championship. Bart mounts with a full twisting double back somersault. He's a very smooth, technical tumbler. Spends a lot of time on technique, unlike a lot of the other gymnasts that just go for tricks. Stands up out of it for a nice landing. Watch Bart's positions. You'll notice that he really has a straight line in his body. A straight line in his tumbling right there. Very stylish in the corners. And he really plays to the crowd. Right here, he lifts his head, shows off a little bit. Here's his press to a handstand. He does a V-seat, 
press through right to a plunge. That's called a strength move in gymnastics. And there's his press through hand thing. Must hold that for two seconds. His third tumbling pass is a pike front with a one and a quarter straddle position. Again, showing some style in the corners. Moving very well. Now preparing for his dismount. Dismounts with a double twisting somersault. Fine routine for Bart. Bart Connor, currently America's premier gymnast, but he's really up against it in this competition this year against his arch rival Jim Hartung of Nebraska. Bart redshirted last year and did not compete, trying to prepare for the Moscow Olympics. Of course, America never went. And here is his score, a 9.70. That might be a little bit disappointing, Kurt, for him in this event. That is, Steve, because two years ago, Bart won this event. And now he will sit by and watch his rival, Jim Hartung of Nebraska, compete in floor exercise. The junior from the Omaha area who won the all-around championship, going for another NCAA title here. And Jim has a very similar routine to Bart's. They mount with the same mount, full twisting double, Bart is a little more technical than Jim, but Jim gets up in the air a little more. There's his mount. Full twisting double back somersault. Good landing. A little corner transition there, preparing for his second pass, which is a handspring branny, back handspring, Arabian dive roll. Back handspring with a half turn. Now he's easing to his flexibility move, which is a split. Kurt, Jim Hartung has really made great strides in his floor exercise routine in the last couple of years, hasn't he? He really has. He's always been a really good tumbler, but he's added some difficulty right here. He did a planche press. He's a little smoother now. He's lived with this routine for a while. Nice corner transition here. Back and roll extension. Preparing for his dismount. Now I'm curious to see whether he goes for a double pike or a double tuck somersault. There he is. He piked it. Nebraska's own Jim Harton brings the crowd to its feet once again with an excellent floor exercise routine. Here's another look at Jim Harton's final tumbling pass. And Jim's going to dismount with a double pike somersault. In the prelims, he dismounted with double tuck, but in the finals, he upgraded it and use the pike position for a nice landing. And it's a 9.80 for Jim Hartung as he outscores his arch rival Bart Connor of Oklahoma by one tenth of a point. Now here's James Yuhashi, a senior at the University of Oregon who specializes in floor exercise and the vault. And watching him in warm-up, Kurt, he throws a lot of difficulty in there. He really does. He has some very dynamic tumbling. He does a lot of punch moves immediately after landings. In his first pass, he does one that's very risky. Round off back handspring, double full, punch one and three. It's risky because you're going right to your head. He'll get up to two tenths back, back on risk for that. There's his press. Front step out, round off, Arabian dive roll, toe touch, punch one and a quarter. There aren't too many people here from the University of Oregon, but they're really appreciating James Yuhashi. This is a very educated crowd, and they know gymnastics. They can appreciate what he's doing. So round off, one and a quarter, round off, Arabian one and a quarter, do a straddle split. So far, the one of the best routines this evening. And a double back dismount. That might do it. 21-year-old University of Oregon senior James Yuhaki, who needs better than a 9.80 to overtake the leader, Jim Hartung, in floor exercise. His coach and other teammates in congratulating him know that he might have the championship wrapped up. A two-time All-American, James Yuhashi. Let's take one more look at that opening tumbling pass where he really attacks the event. Well, he has to attack this event because that's an extremely difficult mount. He does a round-off, back handspring here, double full, the lookout, 
right there. He punches to a one and three quarter somersault. Extremely risky. James Yuhashi, who was the National Junior College champion while a sophomore at Long Beach City College, and now is the NCAA floor exercise champion with a 9.90 here in the 1981 gymnastics championships, edging out Jim Hartung of Nebraska, Bart Connor, and Ron Gallimore finish in a three-way tie for third place at 9.7. We'll be back here in Lincoln, Nebraska in just a minute as the competition continues with the pommel horse. Do you know me? With this hat, I'm recognized as a gourmet cook. With this hat, I'm recognized as a long ball hitter. Without a hat, I guess I'm just another adorable redhead. So, I carry the American Express card. With this, I'm treated like an MVP, a most valuable person. To apply for a card, look for this display wherever the card is welcomed. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Ten tough mean beards versus one big shaver. Can one big shave them all? I'm going to bring this big to its knees. Let's go. It's this big versus barbed wire. After my beard, that big's going to need a stretcher. It's amazing. It looks like one big shaver is going to shave these ten tough beards. Hey, they gave me a great shave. Yeah, big shave of ten tucks nothing. Yes, one big shave these ten tough beards. How many shaves can you get? It's hard to believe, but your house is a little like a balloon. It actually expands and contracts. And to be effective, your house paint has to stretch right with it. Dutch Boy Super Latex House Paint does just that, and we can prove it. We painted half this balloon with Dutch Boy, the other half with regular house paint. Watch. Regular paint cracks and peels. Dutch Boy doesn't. It's that simple. Dutch Boy Super Latex. The proof is in the performance. Nebraska junior Jim Hartung preparing for his pommel horse routine in the competition. And without a doubt, Hartung has been the premier performer this year in the 1981 championships. He's a serious young man when it comes to competition and especially when it comes to his training. Almost any day you can find him doing whatever he needs to do to make himself just that much better. I suppose I became a gymnast mainly because I was too small to play football or play basketball and it really came easy to me and it was like the first thing I ever did so I never really even thought about playing the other sports. I am motivated by the fact that I would someday like to be the best in the country and maybe someday be the best in the world and that usually is enough to keep me working really hard. Between the real slow at the top, maybe you just can't nail it. Keep your elbows tight on, push on them. Jim Hartung today is the strongest gymnast the United States has. He can do more routines, he can appear in more meets, and he can put out more routines day in and day out than any gymnast we've ever had. That includes Kurt Thomas, Bart Connor, and our other greats. Jim Hartung's got the mind that it takes. He's got the physical stamina that it takes. He's got the durability that it takes. Plus, he, dwell, he puts all those together, and he can really perform. In other words, you look at him, and he's what I would call an elite performer. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little bit tired of doing gymnastics every now and then, maybe once or twice a year. I usually take a little break over Christmas, and we usually can get in a hunting trip. I, I've always liked hunting ever since I was a kid, and I always listen to my, the stories my dad tells me, and I really like those a lot, so I really just enjoy it. We just hunt for small games, say, like pheasants or rabbits or possibly quail. I really don't have time for a big game hunting because the deer season usually falls right in the middle of a competitive season and uh, that would take like maybe a, a whole week to you know, go out on a, a trip like that. It doesn't really matter if I shoot anything when I go hunting. It's just, uh, it's just nice to get away and get out of the city and uh, just get back to nature. An up close and personal look at Jim Hartung who now must get back to business. A pommel horse competition, and Hartung will be the first competitor up. And this is one of Jim's better events. He swings very controlled and very slow, but he has some difficult skills. He does a lot of immediate work. Right here, you'll see he does pommel loops, which are circles on the pommel. Here, he does a back more right out of a bailey, which is immediate. Travels to the pommel, travels over to the other pommel. Down in the end of the horse, you must touch all areas of the horse. There's a back in here. 
Tear in, breaks into his scissors. Nice scissor here. Reverse scissor there. He must do two fronts and one reverse scissor, or two reverse and one front. Picks back up into circles. Does a three-quarter bailey down to the end, loop around, and a dismount. Very nice routine. Jim Hartung continuing to delight the crowd here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Next year, remember, he'll be back. He's only a junior. He'll have a chance at three NCAA all-around titles. Here's another look at some of his routine. Now, here's where you'll see that immediate work. He stays on the pommel for two skills. Starts out here with a bailey. Stays on that pommel. Right into a back more. Change of hands. You have to keep right over the pommel so that you don't fall backward or forward. And it's a 9.80 for Jim Hartung. And he sets the mark for the pommel horse competition. Jim Hartung looking for yet another NCAA title. And now here's Steve Jennings of the University of New Mexico, a sophomore on an academic scholarship at the University of New Mexico. He's a tall gymnast, Kurt, which really makes him look good on this event. It sure does, Steve, and he has, again, a lot of difficulty. All of these specialists have difficulty. They stay on those pommels. It seems like they camp out there. Travel down to the end here. He's doing a flare, traveling right up to the pommel, breaking into his scissors. There's a reverse scissor here, front scissor and front scissor, swinging extremely well, breaks back into the flare, now preparing for his dismount, which is three-quarter bailey, loop around, loop, loop with a half off. Steve Jennings of the University of New Mexico from Farmington, New Mexico, a biology major who says he wants to be a veterinarian. Only 20 years old. He's got a couple more years of competition left. Let's take another look at a part of his routine. And here's the part of his flare work. He breaks in right here. He's on the end now. He's not on the pommel. Breaks into his flare. Legs are extremely high. Travels right to the pommel. Keeps his legs splitting. And breaks right into his system. And it's a 9.85 for Jennings, and he takes over first place in the final horse competition, five one hundredths of a point ahead of Jim Hartung. Here's Mike Bergman of the University of California, a junior there, a pommel horse specialist. Mike mounts with a back more, immediate back more, which is two back mores on one pommel, swings very stretched, and he has a, an original skill coming up right in the beginning of the routine. Right here, he does it behind the back top. He'll get originality points for that. Two reverse loops on the end. Does a travel up, breaking into his scissors here. He does back work during his flare, which again is extremely difficult. There's his reverse scissor, two front scissors. Now watch after he picks up back into his circles here how stretched he is. That's what the judges have looked for. Travels down behind his back, tears for his dismount, which is a high loop loop with a half. Mike Bergman, a native of Glenview, Illinois, and the University of California at Berkeley Junior, an engineering major whose grandfather, incidentally, was on the 1916 University of California gymnastics team. And he has to be pleased with that routine, Steve. Steve, thank you, guys. He has to be pleased with the score as well as Mike Bergman gets a 9.85 in the pommel horse competition. And that score of 9.85 ties him with Steve Jennings of California for first place. Jim Hartung of Nebraska finishes third at 9.80. There's Dan and Ellen Fields. He's editor of our local newspaper. He looks worried about his problem dandruff. I wish he'd ask me. Mr. Owen, what shampoo should Dan use for his problem dandruff? Ellen, how about Tegrin? It works on itching and flaking? In a national survey, three out of four dermatologists judge Tegrin's medication effective in fighting even problem dandruff. Let's try it out. Oh, how's Dan's problem dandruff? Tegrin's terrific news, Mr. Owens. Prove it to yourself, Tegrin works. Everyone knows when you save gasoline, you save money. But how much? You'll know if you set the money aside for something you want. Like this camera, perhaps. It costs carpooling for a year. Or this microwave oven. To pay for it, ride the bus to work instead of driving this year. If you'd like to know more, get the conservation bonus book, free from Shell. Come to Shell for answers. The last time the U.S. Open was held at Marion Golf Club, Lee Trevino triumphed over Jack Nicklaus in a classic playoff confrontation. Coverage of this year's Open begins Thursday night, June 18th, with eight hours of live 18-hole action that weekend. The U.S. Open exclusively on ABC. 
Keith Jackson, Marty LaCourie back in Baton Rouge to summarize the first day of competition in the NCAA Track and Field Championships. We'll be going back to more gymnastics in just a moment. But first, let's highlight, Marty, a rather remarkable 10,000 meters in which the University of Texas El Paso won first, second, third, and fifth 26 points. It's incredible. Probably very few uh, events have ever been dominated by UTEP, by any school as UTEP did in this race. We see a shot here of what it's like to run against the Niamh Bowie and the rest of the Kenyans are surrounded with those orange shorts and after 24 laps it can get very trying because you know they're going to be there at the end. They've got superior records, uh, much more superior than some of the other, especially the young Americans in the race. And here they're pulling it out. They really had a lot of fun today. Nyan Bowie throwing in some skirts, just fooling around. Yuzoki right behind him here, not really trying to race him because as you'll notice, Nyan Bowie slows up and he makes no effort to try and nip him at the tape. They're going for the team points. So it was a Tanzanian, a Kenyan, a South African, an American, and a Kenyan in the first five places. And suddenly, the team standings get very dramatic because with the 26 points in that event, the University of Texas El Paso has jumped up into second place, trailing only SMU. And Salazar of Oregon shows the pain, the struggle that goes with competing against the uh, Kenyans and the Tanzanians. So there are the team standings, 32-27, SMU UTEP, followed by Houston and Tennessee. We'll be back later with more from the track and field championships, but right now, let's return to more gymnastics. Welcome back to the Bob Devaney Sports Center here in Lincoln, Nebraska, the site of the 1981 NCAA Individual Gymnastics Championships. Steve Zabriski along with Kurt Thomas bringing you the action. And the ring competition has already taken place. Jim Hartung of the University of Nebraska wrapped it up with a 9.9. His teammate Scott Johnson finished second, and there was a three-way tie for third. Here is Hartung's winning routine in the rings. And Steve, it would have been very easy for Jim to let down here after winning the all-around in this event. But as you can see, he goes after it and attacks There's this front uprise to an L. Now watch this, a straight body, straight arm press to a handstand. Keeping the rings very still. Straight arm shoot to a handstand. Back uprise. And now preparing for his dismount. He does high, dislocate, right through to a full in, full out, double twisting, double dismount. Hartung picking up his first individual championship here this year. Earlier, Kurt Thomas had an opportunity to give us a demonstration in vaulting, our next event in the competition. Well, there are three basic stages in vaulting, the first stage being the pre-flight. This is where the gymnast reaches for the horse off the board, and the judge looks for the form. Right here, you see the block, which gets the gymnast height off the horse, and the third stage is the after-flight distance between the gymnast and the horse. And as we go to the vaulting, our first competitor, 18-year-old Peter Shields, a freshman at Cortland State, you'll notice the bandage on his left wrist. He actually is recovering from a broken wrist. And Steve, for his optional vault, he uses a handspring front in a tuck position to a very nice landing. And great distance from the horse, Kurt. In fact, he was about two horse lengths away, and that's what the judges are looking for. Peter Shields of Cortland State, a freshman who had no gymnastics program in the latter stages of his high school attendance in Rochester, New York, had to work out with a girls' gymnastics school, and it obviously has paid off for him with a beautiful ball here in the NCAA championships. A 9.9 .9 for Peter Shields, a super score. Kurt, let's take an opportunity to take one more look at what turned out to be an excellent ball. Well, there's his pre-flight. He doesn't have any form break. Good push off the horse for his second phase, and now his third phase, the after flight to a perfect landing. Now here's Randy Wickstrom of the University of California, also a freshman there. Randy, only 18 years old, also from Rochester, New York, as was Peter Shields. There's a handspring front pike with a half turn to a good landing. Randy Wickstrom of California at Berkeley, a vaulting specialist, and doing very well in his specialty. Stevie had a lot of block off the horse. He was very high in the air. They'll take that into consideration. 
Randy is a former National Junior Olympic vaulting champion as well. Let's take another look at it. Here's Randy's vault. He does a handspring pike front with a half, and right in the middle of the vault, he opens up to a layout position and makes the half turn, looks for the landing. Very, very nice vault. Just a little hop on the landing there. And it's a 9.8 for Randy Wickstrom of the University of California, and that currently puts him in second place behind Peter Shields, who, of course, had a 9.9 that's going to be very tough to beat. But if anybody can do it, it's this man right here, Ron Gallimore of Iowa State University, who has had five perfect tens in this event during his lifetime. And he's going to have to stick a good vault here. He does a layout Sukahara with a full twist, extremely high. He gets good block off the horse and a lot of distance. He's concentrating. Good, powerful run. Nice block to a stiff landing. That should do it for him. I wouldn't be surprised to see a 10. Ron Gallimore being congratulated by assistant coach Dave Nicholson at Iowa State and his teammates. And the crowd knows that he may have another perfect 10 to his record. And there it is. It is a 10 for Ron Gallimore of Iowa State, the sixth of his illustrious vaulting career in collegiate gymnastics. He won the vault in 1978 when he competed for Louisiana State University. He transferred after his sophomore year to Iowa State, and boy, are they glad he did, because Ron Gallimore has become one of the premier vaulters in the world. Let's take another look at it, Kurt. And now you'll see why that scored a 10. He has perfect form in the air, nice height, looks for that landing, and obviously, a perfect landing. And a perfect score of 10. The first 10 we've seen in this year's competition. Ed Gagne, his head coach, congratulating him. And there's Steve Elliott, last year's champion from the University of Nebraska in this event, congratulating Ron Gallimore as well. Gallimore winning his fourth individual championship of his career in NCAA gymnastics with a perfect score of 10 in the vault. Peter Shields second, Randy Wickstrom third. We'll be back in just a minute with the high bar competition. When you're searching around for investment ideas, it's easy to lose your bearings. What appears to be a profitable trend can be here today and gone tomorrow. But even when there seems to be no place to turn, Merrill Lynch has an uncanny ability for matching your goals with fertile investment advice that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. Here's two good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Hi, Alex. Alex, I'm just coming out to look for you, Greenhorn. We took a little detour. A little detour? A little detour for what? Well, we want to say thank you for putting up with us these last couple of weeks. So we stopped at the store and picked up some low ground. Well, by golly, you city folks are all right. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Uh, we had such a good time. We're coming back next year. OK, but don't tell my horses that. <laughs> playing ball, I don't care how much I sweat. It's part of the game. <laughs> oh, rap. But off the field, I want to feel nice and dry. And I want to smell nice. That's why I use Speed Stick Super Dry Antiperspirant. It's the wide stick. Effective protection with more dryness to help fight wetness. And it goes on dry so you can get dressed right away. So get on the stick. The wide stick. Speed Stick Super Dry Antiperspirant by Menace. As we go to the horizontal bar competition, Bart Connor of Oklahoma will be up. Bart, about a year ago, had surgery on a torn muscle of his right bicep. His coach, Paul Zert, helping him up. There's a stem to a handstand, stalder, and here's his release move. Flyaway half, regrasp. No form break. Kip. There's a jam into inverts right on top. Swinging nice so far. Good extension on the bar. It's a giant half turn, the immediate stalder. Now all he has is his dismount. Full in, back out. Full in, back out. One hop, I'd say maybe one tenth of reduction. Pretty clean routine for Bart Connor of Oklahoma, who's looking for a final chance at an NCAA individual championship. He's a senior, and this is his final NCAA championship competition. 
now let's take another look at Bart's dismount. He does a full in back out. Does a full on the first somersault, a back on the second somersault. Nice clean form to a great landing. And it's a 9.80 for Bart Connor in his final NCAA gymnastics performance. Jim Hartog, Nebraska. Certainly the premier performer in this 1981 NCAA championship meet in the all-around, the team competition, and here in the individual as well. And this is his 18th routine in two days. Mounts the bar with a stem to an immediate jam. Right into inverted giants. There's a hop pirouette. Getting ready for his release move, which is a reverse hect. Nicely done. Kip, cast to a handstand. There's a stalder. There's another stalder. To a blind change. Now a pirouette on top. Two giants to a half in, half out dismount. A solid landing. Jim Hartzong of Nebraska, who needs a 9.85 to overtake Bart Connors' 9.80 in the horizontal bar. And that 9.8 is going to be tough to beat. Jim Hartung being congratulated by Ron Gallimore of Iowa State and others. Coached by Francis Allen. And boy, you can bet they're glad he's going to be back for one more year at the University of Nebraska. A 9.8 for Hartung. And that ties him for first place with Bart Connor in the horizontal bar competition. Here's a fellow who can really work out on the horizontal bar. Phil Cahoy of the University of Nebraska, a spectacular performer in this event. Spectacular he is. He has two big release moves. First one coming up at the beginning of his routine. It's really long on the high bar and it looks good. There's a stalder. Here's his first release. It's a straddle heck vault. No deduction so far. Now watch this. He jams into inverted giants. And right out of inverted giants, he does a front pike front somersault regrasp. Right into a stalder, another stalder. All he has left is his dismount, which is a full end back out. If he hits it, he can win it. I think he won it. Bill Cahoy getting a standing ovation as you look at Bart Connor, who had a 9.80 along with Jim Hartung to try for the lead. Bill Cahoy to a standing ovation may have taken that lead away from him here in the horizontal bar competition. Last year, Cahoy won the individual championship in both the parallel bars and the high bar. Let's take one more look at a portion of his horizontal bar routine. And here, Phil jams into his inverted giants, which are a requirement on horizontal bar. And coming up is his big release move. He does a pike front somersault out of inverted giants. Here's his release. Takes it up nice and high. Catches with no form deduction. And he's done it. A 9.90 for Bill Cahoy. Another standing ovation for the hometown Nebraska University Cornhuskers. Bill Cahoy winning the high bar championship with a 9.90. Hartung, Connor, and Babcock all tying for second. In an event that we did not have time to bring you, the parallel bars, there was a three-way tie for first. Phil Cahoy, Jim Hartung, and Peter Vidmar of UCLA all at 9.7. This is Steve Zabriskie for Kurt Thomas saying so long from Lincoln, Nebraska.